Hey there, it's Paul Mark from Transcend Coffee. And uh, today we're gonna brew or brew up some coffee on a Technivorm. And uh, the reason why we're doing this video is actually a bit of an advanced technique for making a really, really great coffee on this machine. We've been working and playing around a little bit with a, a video series called Becoming a Coffee Connoisseur. And, and that sort of got us playing around even more in terms of brewing techniques. And, and Josh Hawken, our uh, Director of Coffee Innovation and Quality Control has been messing around on the Technivorm a lot in the last couple of weeks. Uh, and so, and we've been getting really great results in terms of actual, uh, not just flavor, but also geeking out a little bit with TDS and the Extract Mojo and making sure that uh, our ratios are proper in terms of yield and extraction rates. And uh, if that's a little bit Greek to you, then we maybe need to do a video about that stuff as well. But Suffice it to say for today, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna walk you through uh, a technique for brewing on the Technivorm that requires a little bit more of your hands-on involvement. It requires you to pay more attention to what's going on. But I think at the end of the day, what you're going to notice and what you'll discern at the, at the end of the day, even if you don't have the, the tools to measure extraction yield and TDS, total dissolved solids, you're gonna notice a difference in taste. And that ultimately is what this is all about. We owe, a, I think, a little bit of a debt of gratitude or at least a shout out to uh, Matt Perger out of Australia because we've sort of taken uh, his approach to doing a pour over and just we're using the Technivorm as our pouring apparatus rather than standing there with a kettle. And so we've sort of, we've sort of robbed from him a bunch of his techniques in terms of uh, brewing and uh, just because we found it really works well. So. All right, to start with, uh, we're doing, I'm, I didn't, I'm not pouring it in here because I'm assuming you sort of get it already, but again, the ratio for uh, drip coffee is 60 grams per liter. And why I say the ratio for drip coffee is because we've started to understand via Vince Waddell, uh, VST, who, who is the founder or the creator of the Mojo To Go uh, TDS uh, refractometer is that drip versus immersion uh, is actually something that is that there's a differential and, and i'll get into that more later in another episode but just suffice it to say we're, we're brewing on a drip machine here so 60 grams to a liter uh, i'm actually only going to brew today 75 750 mils and so one of the things that we want to sort of raise the bar a little bit with in terms of of uh advanced techniques is using your scale and actually weighing the water and while it's it, it takes a little bit more time it, it's more accurate and so you you know for sure that you've got exactly 750 mils you're not just relying on on a, a number on the side of the water reservoir that may or may not be exactly right um, when we uh, do the when we when we normally just on regular brewing we're pre-wetting the filter with uh, hot water what we're doing in this situation is we're actually we're actually uh, going to let the machine itself pre-wet the filter uh, so I've dumped about 225 mils of water. It doesn't really matter how much goes in there. Turn it on, and the beauty of what of the beauty of letting the machine pre-wet the filter for you is that there's some water that is always left in the in the glass tube on the brewer itself. There's some excess water that's left in there, and so by letting the machine do the the pre-wetting of the filter for you, you're preheating the machine. You're ensure, you're assuring that there's fresh water in that glass tube, so that when you go to brew, it's hot, it's fresh. And uh, ultimately, you want the filter wet anyways. But uh, the, allowing the machine to do it guarantees that you've got uh, hot, fresh water in that in this glass tube so that when you go to brew, you're not getting older or staler water or cooler water, which will affect your, your brew. So we're just going to let this... Uh, basically, I let the, the water sort of accumulate in the with the, with the, the brew basket stop on and uh, allow it to accumulate and then just at the end of it, just let it flow through and then dump it out of the pot. All right, so 45 grams of coffee. Uh, we're using Machiti, it's our Ethiopian coffee. It's tasty, fruity, washed Ethiopian. Uh, thanks so much to Aleko and the, the crew at Coffee Shrug for, for uh, helping us uh, source this wonderful coffee. It's become one of our favorites and it's definitely, I know, a favorite of most of the people that uh, have been buying coffee online at transcendcoffee.com or .ca as we are now called. <clears throat> um, and uh, obviously gonna grind fresh and one of the things that you'll need to do if you're gonna to start to use this approach to, to uh, 
brewing coffee and maybe you're going to do this on a Saturday morning instead of a Wednesday morning because you have more time, uh, is that you're going to have to coarsen up your grind a little bit uh, just because the amount of stirring that we're going to do uh, in the, with the coffee in the brew, ba brew basket is, is significant. And if the coffee isn't ground coarse enough, uh, you're going to get over extraction and you're also going to get to a point where the coffee sort of gums up, the fines of the coffee gum up the filter and you don't get proper drainage. So my coffee filter has been, my coffee filter is pre-wet. Get rid of the, get rid of that hot water. In, in the carafe. All right, so I'm gonna grind. Oh, that they would in invent a quiet grinder, eh? These grinders are so loud. Now, this is one of the better ones, actually, the Virtuoso. All right, so uh, dump the grinds into the, the bed, and what I do is just give it a little shake so that we start off with the, the grind bed flat, and we'll let her start. So brew basket stop closed, and we're gonna start the timer here as soon as the water starts to flow. So I'm gonna actually time this. Uh, so as soon as, it's obviously, because the machine is preheated, it starts very quickly. As soon as, so I'm starting the water, starting my timer as soon as the water starts to flow. I'm gonna let the water accumulate for probably the first 15 seconds. And then I'm gonna to start to stir violently and uh, until my timer reads 30 seconds. So start to stir here and, and stir hard. Don't, don't be gentle here. Like you don't wanna break the paper obviously, but you wanna make sure that, that you're really giving this a really good, good and thorough stir. Uh, it should be sort of creamy, almost uh, Starbucks espresso-like crema on top. And so 30 seconds, let it roll. Sorry, a little jab there, I couldn't help. Uh, all right, so, and then the goal here is to have this process done uh, within four minutes and 30 seconds. So, because that's, again, based on the, the ratio of 750 mils of water to 45 grams of coffee. Obviously that ratio will change, the time will change a bit when you add coffee because you're adding water. Uh, what we find in all honesty, uh, what, we, what we find with this method is that brewing anything more than, than uh, a liter at a time is, is just not practical with this method. It just doesn't work. And so you are going to have to sacrifice some volume if you want to start to brew this way because it just the, the basket doesn't allow for the proper manipulation of the coffee if you're trying to brew a full batch at, at 75 grams. Okay, I'm at about a minute and 30 seconds right now, so I'm gonna give this, give this a, a good stir again. Uh, and basically, I'm just trying to drive this, the grounds down into the water again. It's, it's almost like a remontage in, in, in wine, where when they're making wine, they're just pushing that pumice down back into the, into the liquid so that you're getting full extraction. And that's really, it's not just a, what we're after is proper extraction at, at about probably here about 22 percent 23 percent actually uh, extraction but we're also after even extraction so that requires us to actually sort of work the coffee a little bit more as we're as we're as we're brewing and so you can see why this is a little bit more hands-on you're not walking away from it you can't sort of forget about it you're stuck beside the machine uh, as this takes place now granted it's only five minutes of your day so it's not like it's taking up oodles of your time, but it definitely does require you to sort of be here more often. And in all honesty, it's not that much different than doing a pour over other than you're letting the machine distribute the water for you instead of you being there with it, with a, a kettle then pouring over. So uh, we're just waiting now. It's about two minutes, almost three minutes. Uh, the water is almost completely gone. And so just before the water finishes completely distributing through the the brewing arm, I'm going to give it one more stir, again, just to ensure that the, the top of the water, or top of the, the yeah, the, the, the brew basket with, is, is flat. All the coffee grounds are fully submerged. And then once the coffee is done brewing, or the water is done coming through, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, pick the basket up, and it's a little bit finicky in all honesty, but you're going to pick the basket up and you're going to give it a little tap. Uh, two taps probably, and again, that's just to settle the coffee grounds. And uh, what we're after here is a completely flat bottom or flat top to the to the ground bed inside that filter, because essentially that is going to ensure that we've got 
proper extraction, and a really great taste of coffee. So and in all honesty, this is a little bit easier to do if you have the CD thermal model because it's a little bit taller. But suffice it to say, give it a little tap and we'll let the water just continue to drain. And at about four minutes and 30 seconds, we should be complete. And uh, if all goes well. And again, all of this is a more advanced, more involved brewing technique on the, the Mocha Master. Why? Because you'll end up with a better tasting cup of coffee. And ultimately that's what we're after. Uh, we're, we're all, all of us, uh, at, after spending hard earned dollars on really great coffee, investing in equipment, uh, you're essentially wanting to do the best job that you can and have the best product that you possibly can at home. And so uh, this is, through our experimentation, this really does drive uh, great quality coffee to another level and uh, enables you to brew something that uh, is probably going, and hopefully as you try this, you'll notice and, and uh, be able to tell the difference as well. All right, so uh, that's it, I think. Hopefully you find this informative and instructive. And uh, yeah, again, if you have found this informative and instructive, check out our other videos. So there's a, a Transcend Coffee uh, YouTube channel where we have lots of videos about all kinds of different things. And we'll continue to uh, post new videos of advanced techniques and more advanced uh, aspects of brewing coffee at home uh, in the future. So, all right, it's me signing out. Remember, drink less more often. Cheers.